Uh, we are a drug and cell based uh, regenerative uh, therapy which differentiates itself a little bit from other uh, cell companies. Is this the right button? Uh, Ricardio was founded 2011 uh, actually in Europe uh, because the origin uh, of the technology was at the University of Munich in Germany. Uh, and uh, we relocated the headquarters uh, four years ago to San Francisco and are focusing, as the name says, on regenerative cardiac therapy. So our focus are cardiac ischemic uh, therapies. Therefore, our pipeline consists of AMI, chronic heart diseases, and some other uh, specific cardiovascular diseases. Our lead compound is a small molecule uh, originally developed for uh, diabetes, a DPP-4 inhibitor, uh, which activates on FCF1, and I will talk about the uh, specific mechanism of action later on. Uh, this product was already in phase three in diabetes, and we repurposed it completely by uh, changing the formulation, the way of administration, and, uh, and the toxicity uh, for cardiac diseases. Uh, the preclinical development of this compound was completed already in 2015. We received the IND uh, in 2017, completed a phase one study, and are currently in a phase two uh, study for acute myocardial infarction, which is uh, enrolling in US and Europe. Uh, and uh, would like to expand this uh, uh, clinical uh, pipeline in the next years uh, to CHF and to other regions. This is why we are currently after our Series A, raising a Series uh, B uh, this year. Our target disease is the ischemic uh, disease uh, with uh, a start uh, by a heart attack. Uh, as you know, the standard uh, progress is usually infarct expansion, thinning, uh, and uh, by chronic uh, dilatation ends up in heart failure. So this is uh, the usual uh, way of a disease. Uh, it uh, can be symptomatically treated, but not really causal treated. And this is why our alternative uh, is uh, to start at the very beginning of a disease, immediately at uh, the myocardial infarction onset with an alternative, and to reduce the damage, uh, enhance function, and improve function by our regenerative approach with uh, the goal to increase uh, survival of these patients. Our mechanism of action uh, is based on two drugs which we are using. Uh, uh, we are working in contrast to a lot of other companies which you've heard uh, today uh, with uh, adult cell cells from bone marrow. Uh, we are using for the mobilization of these uh, cells GCSF, uh, approved and marketed since uh, decades for oncology diseases, but also approved for stem cell harvesting. Uh, this means that we first mobilized by GCSF stem cell out of a, uh, adult bone marrow. And once these stem cells are in the circulation, we target them uh, by our drug uh, into the heart, uh, into the ischemic uh, tissue. The mechanism of action for this uh, is based on the uh, X, uh, prime of uh, SDF1, a chemokine, which is exprimed in any ischemic tissues and physiologically already attracts uh, circulating stem cells. Uh, this SDF1 uh, is physiologically very quickly degraded by proteases. This means that it's not a uh, long time active. And our approach is to prolong this activity and by this to enhance the binding of the circulating stem cells to the ischemic heart tissue. So what we are doing, we uh, significantly uh, increase the number of stem cells in the circulation, and by our drug, uh, we inhibit the degradation of this SDF1, and by this, enable SDF1 to bind circulating stem cells, and the effect is uh, similar to what Brian explained us uh, right before, uh, that these stem cells with their paracrine effects uh, initiate regeneration by uh, prevention of apoptosis, vessel formation, cardiomyocyte proliferation, etc. So this is our mechanism of action. Uh, it's proven uh, uh, since years. A lot of other companies are working on this, but really by extracorporeal cells, we have a small molecule which makes uh, our life and also the regulatory pathway a little bit easier uh, than for other compounds. Our compound, just to summarize, uh, is a DPP-4 inhibitor, uh, initially uh, developed by a Californian company for uh, 
type 2 diabetes uh, was already in phase three, was discontinued uh, due to uh, FDA uh, uh, ruling uh, on the class, not on the compounds. Uh, it's extremely safe. It's a second generation DPP4, uh, which uh, also act on GLP-1 from diabetes, and we have repurposed it uh, with its activity to SDF1. Uh, it's uh, protected, uh, and uh, we have, in, on top of this composition of matter patent, we have uh, the original use patent uh, from uh, the University of Munich. So, but we have uh, an IP, which is sandwich IP, uh, protecting the use and also the compounds. Uh, uh, we have successfully repurposed this, uh, and uh, all uh, the safety package uh, from the past uh, is helping us in the whole process and we could meanwhile confirm by our phase one studies and also the ongoing uh, phase two study that uh, this is a very uh, safe uh, compound. Our clinical program uh, is uh, therefore de-risked. Uh, it's uh, FDA approved. Uh, we have started with a phase two study last year. It's a global study uh, which is uh, enrolling in US uh, and Europe, uh, the target uh, number are 140 patients. We are comparing the, uh, our therapy to a placebo group right after the infarction with a very small uh, time window. Uh, and uh, the goal is uh, to complete the enrollment and to have data ready by 2020. Uh, on top of that, uh, we are intending to start, uh, beside the acute indication, also a program for chronic heart failure. Uh, which uh, is intended to be started uh, this year. Uh, and we are also working on a new, smaller indication uh, which uh, will go into phase one by next year. So our focus is cardiovascular diseases, so we don't go to other potential areas because uh, we think that the market is big enough and the task tough enough. Here you see our milestones. So we are right now in uh, 2019, as I said, uh, we expect to complete the phase two study by end of this year. We are also expanding our clinical program uh, to China. Cardiovascular diseases are a big issue uh, in China, uh, and uh, the goal is uh, to be by 2023 uh, after the pivotal phase three study uh, in the market. We have a, a team uh, of uh, very experienced uh, people in all areas, uh, a very experienced KOL board with Richard Schatz, uh, one of the uh, uh, key people uh, in PCI who is leading our advisory board uh, and are uh, rolling out everything globally. Uh, so we have a global manufacturing uh, and also the clinical program, as I said, is global. And therefore, we believe that uh, through our uh, drug-based regeneration uh, therapy, which is really unique and facilitates uh, the access to the patients and uh, the access for the disease, we will be uh, able to uh, make a breakthrough for these patients already in the early stage and by this avoid a lot of uh, the side effects and process results uh, of this disease. And I'm happy to talk more about it uh, with Dan. Thank you very much. Uh, grab a seat, we'll do some Q&A. So, um, historically, there's always been a, a lot of uh, um, focus in terms of design for studies that are looking to be adjunct in a, a acute myocardial infarction. Um, how do you how have you thought about the design of the phase two to tease out the right data points? What are you looking for to get out of this phase two that's going to inform you of a phase three effort? I think uh, we had uh, the advantage of a late start. Um, as uh, a lot of uh, cardiovascular studies were done in the past 10 or 15 years with various approaches, also cell approaches. Uh, some of them failed, uh, and uh, we could uh, learn out of these failures, uh, which uh, were failures in patient selection, uh, in uh, endpoint selection, uh, and in evaluation times. Uh, so the protocol for our phase two study uh, is the result really of uh, three years preparatory work uh, with our scientific advisor boards where we try to work out uh, the optimal protocol out of the learnings from these studies. Uh, uh, this results uh, in a very sophisticated and complex study. 
uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, a very uh, narrow uh, inclusion criteria, uh, because it's known if you have, for example, patients uh, uh, who were included more generously in the past in other uh, trials, uh, that uh, you get uh, no results. Uh, so uh, we have a very low uh, level for the ejection fraction, which is a result of the infarction size. Uh, we are in the regeneration area. This means, uh, in general, the earlier you start the regeneration, the better the results. A lot of uh, studies started uh, with uh, the therapy three or four days after the standard therapy. This is just too late, and this is known. This is why our therapeutic window is uh, 36 hours after the standard therapy. A very challenging uh, time uh, window for uh, even centers uh, who are participating, like Stanford or Scripps in San Diego. Uh, this is why uh, our centers are really uh, the top centers in Europe and US. Uh, but by this, uh, we think uh, we can safeguard uh, uh, good results for the study. Uh, so we have learned from the past, included this into the protocol, uh, and are very optimistic uh, that uh, we will get by this uh, uh, significant results. So uh, as you optimize the the study to have the right patient population, uh, what, what would be the right ejection fraction for these patients, or what would be the, the minimum ejection fraction where you think the therapeutic effect would not be obscured by the destabilization? Okay, I think you have to differentiate uh, for the, in the inclusion criteria for this phase two study, which is a proof of concept study, and future studies. So uh, now we are very strict uh, so the current ejection fraction limit is uh, below 45%. A lot of other studies were at 50%. These 5% can make a difference already. Uh, so, so this is our target. Uh, uh, we don't have a lower ceiling. Of, uh, you can say of a lower of the ejection fraction, the bigger the infarction. But uh, even in these uh, type of myocardial infarction, we think that we make uh, we can make a difference. Uh, this is why we include even this heavy infarctions into the study. And so how do you, uh, what, what's kind of the estimate of how long the phase two will, will run? And, and um, again, what, what are the endpoints that you're going to be mm -hmm. looking for uh, to inform, you know, bringing the program mm -hmm. forward into a pivotal? So with regard to the endpoints, of, uh, the primary endpoint is safety, because the drug never was in uh, cardiac uh, patients up to now. Uh, secondary endpoint is efficacy. Uh, uh, we ask the FDA uh, which endpoint would be uh, appropriate, uh, but uh, from the potential six endpoints, uh, the FDA was uh, was very helpful. They said all of them are appropriate. Uh, so we are doing six potential endpoints, which makes uh, the study uh, from the evaluation point uh, sophisticated. We are using cardiac MRI uh, as uh, a diagnostic, uh, which is also not uh, present in, in every clinic. Uh, so we are evaluating all potential six endpoints, uh, ejection fraction, right, left, wall motion, wall thickness. So all potential endpoints uh, where we expect a signal. Also learning from past studies uh, who uh, were uh, evaluating the endpoints, for example, only by ECHO, which is standard available in every hospital, uh, but it proved uh, that uh, this is not enough. So you have to uh, cover the whole range which make it complicated. We have a core lab uh, for all uh, these uh, factors, and we have a baseline evaluation and an evaluation after uh, three months. And from the clinical community and the, the feedback from your principal investigators that you're working with, what do you think they're focused on in terms of uh, seeing that this is going to be you know, therapeutically impactful to their patients and want to continue to develop the drug? I think the, uh, the PIs are very enthusiastic. Uh, we have some problems to restrict the study, as I described, uh, because I think that this principle may apply not only uh, to the typical uh, myocardial infarction group for clinical studies, which is the STEMI group, uh, with, uh, with reduced uh, ejection fraction, but also for the non-STEMI, which is a more heterogeneous group. Uh, but uh, nowadays you know that the mortality of both groups is the same after one year. Uh, but uh, just for regular purposes, purposes, uh, we have to slow down them a little bit. Uh, we need a very homogeneous group, so this is why we stick to this uh, STEMI group. But they are very enthusiastic. I think that uh, even 
uh, in more complicated phases, we could make a difference. And this is why they are also very strongly advocating for our second program in CHF, uh, which is different, the chronic disease, uh, it's later stage. But as uh, we have seen in our large animal models that we, uh, we can make uh, uh, a benefit to the damaged cardiac tissue, even if it's already reduced, uh, we expect even in uh, chronic uh, heart disease uh, positive effects, and that's the background for starting the CHF study. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. It's been okay. great. Thank you.